What check one two? Also, now I'm like wearing this, and I'm realizing how much I fucking hate silver jewelry on me. <laughs> yeah, it's just not for you. This is just simply and truly not for me. It's not for you, and that's okay. That's not okay. I don't need to be. to be for you. You know? No, you're we're right. just a couple of gold girlies. Make new friends. We keep the old summer silver. And summer gold. And summer gold. Here's the thing: is one is silver, the other is gold. Those days. Also, would have been a red flag because I'm almost certain that Alex got me a platinum band. Like a pat- platinum silver Ooh. band from like, our. <gasps> oh! <laughs> I got that! Okay. <laughs> it's in the keyboard. Oh, I can't believe we recorded that whole thing. <laughs> Chaos. <laughs> Already starting off on a good foot. All right, we're back. We're here. We're going. We're doing it. Round two. <laughs> and action. Okay. The girls are back together again. The I summer can't tell, of TGUNF. We're in the same room. The summer of TGUNF. And uh, everyone, I'm very happy about how much time we've recorded the podcast in person. It's been. Just so lovely. It's been a delight. I like that we get to look in each other's eyes while we're sitting at tables. I know. Like, everyone's going to be like, what are you looking at <laughs> each other? Okay, we have, I mean, actually a decent agenda today. I didn't think we, we were going to. We say gonna. that every week. Yeah, I don't know. I really, I, I mean, I haven't had a single ounce of brain space to think about F1 for a full week at I this was, point. So. I was going to say, I don't think I have really paid attention to F1 since we recorded the podcast last week because I've just been so busy. So for the first time ever, I did research today <laughs> to figure out what the heck we were going to talk about. So welcome to the TG1F pod. TG1F, an F1 podcast with Kate and Nicole. I'm Kate. I'm Nicole. And this is our show. We're your host. Yada, yada, yada. Um, so we have not really thought had a, a like not one F one thought in a full week mm-hmm. basically, um, because we did have my bachelorette party mm-hmm. this weekend, and I'm just gonna do a public PSA shout out to both Nicole and my other best friend Liz and Liz if you're listening this is for you, <laughs> um, who just literally planned the most incredible weekend of my entire life. I had so much fun. I like just literally was just like smiling and laughing. I laughed. I cried. Tears of joy. We definitely went through all the emotions. I went through every emotion except for anger. We did do grief. You and I were grieving the weekend. Oh my God. (laughs) Guys, my best rep party started on Thursday and ended on Sunday. And on Friday night, Mere a mere twenty four hours after the it had started, Nicole and I were laying in bed, and we were both just like, "I'm so sad. It's gonna be over soon." <laughs> like we had a full day left, like a full day and a full night. Like it was, and I was like, "If there has never been anything that is more us than just like being sad <laughs> about something while we're still in it." <laughs> You know, it's what's why we're in therapy. And we're working on being in the moment more. Like, we're, this is why we have anxiety because we're so worried about the future all the time. All the time. Like, we were literally just like, wow, I can't believe it's going to be over in like 48 hours. So emo. Like, <laughs> I'm so embarrassed about it, but it's fine. It was so much fun. I mean, I am sad that it's over. Like, I wish I could relive it a hundred times over. If you haven't seen any of the content that's on Instagram, on our personals, um, it was Camp Kate themed. And we had this really awesome house up in, like, the mountains of New Hampshire, uh, right on the, the, like, a huge river in New Hampshire. And the house had, like, a full game room. Nicole and I spent, like, an hour and a half playing like a gun game it was like a police (laughs) commissioner police train academy training game um and i'd just like to say i understand i get guns now yeah we get that second amendment i'm into it (laughs) the right to bear fake arms in the comfort of my home arcade uh we were really good guys we did get up to the final level but we just simply couldn't pass it however i was just as sweaty as I am after I leave hot yoga. I was like, I had- We were working hard. We were working. We were in boot camp. We were training. Yeah, we were training. Training um, day with Will, uh, 
or yeah, Will Smith. That was us. <laughs> it was it was so fun. So yeah, it had a huge like arcade room. We didn't utilize the arcade room nearly as much as we should have. Well, we but were outside because- a lot. It's because we had a sweatshop going on yeah. in the next room over. We made so many friendship bracelets. We had so many beads and so many like strings and ropes. And some people were making like the threaded friendship bracelets and some people are using beads. And Carly had like two pages of orders that she was working on. She was like, <laughs> I can't hang out guys. I'm working. She was working. And we had a whole day of, uh, camp games, which we'll get into a little bit later on mm-hmm. in this podcast. We have a fun segment, but we did things like a three-legged race and Dizzy Bat and a three-hour long beer pong tournament. tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just like genuinely the best weekend of my life. And it was so much fun to just see my friends from so many different walks of life and like time periods of my life be in the same room and talking to each other and laughing and getting along and it was just like so heartwarming and so Nicole thank you very much for planning that and Liz if you're listening thank you for planning it was like the best weekend ever it was my honor on my honor girl scout pledge um well next up is your wedding so can't wait for that well we got your next shower, first. shower. Yeah, shower and, and then, then wedding then crazy but it got me noodling on at some point in life we should definitely during the f1 summer break do like a tgunf camp camp tgunf and get all of our followers to come like rent well you're into summer camp or something we just do the same thing oh my god that'd be so fun literally so fun that'd be so so um I mean, really yeah, great. Like a full weekend. Yeah. I mean, it could be a race weekend. Like it would be really fun. Like go to camp during a race weekend and we can like watch the race. I'm noodling on it. So look Don't out worry, summer 2025. TG- camp yeah, 2025. It's got to be two years from now. Can't be next year. Yeah. We need a couple years to plan. Yeah. We'll have to get it into gear. Yeah. We have, this is going to take a lot of work. Nicole has been planning my bachelorette since October. So yeah, like, so we need time. Please, 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 please. Um, please just have some grace as we <laughs> plan this. All right. Uh, anyways, it was best, and we had so much fun, and now we're back on Cape Cod before we jet off to Chicago. For the weekend. For the weekend. Uh, and then we'll both be back in New York together. <laughs> Actually, it's so crazy. Nicole and I are moving in together because so I have no idea. <laughs> so it literally feels like this summer. But yeah, now we're back, and so we haven't really thought about F1 a lot, but we did watch F1 at my bachelorette party Mm -hmm. I was drunk for it so we did watch qualifying or no we watched the sprint race yeah I don't remember exactly anything that happened except I remember that Charles didn't get pulled but because Max had a penalty Mm -hmm. I was like he did that for me yeah yeah he did that for me he did that for you that was good yeah so we we had a pretty uh mild race I feel like it was fine. I mean, we say that every week. Obviously, Max won. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. Red Bull has won every single race this season. So, so, so boring. That <laughs> That's that's the fact of, of the season. Um, obviously, Max hasn't won every single one, but almost. Was that stat I saw that's like Max for Stappen has not been passed? Overtaken. Overtaken, like, all season. Yeah. Like that, like, yeah. something just absolutely stupid. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like, okay, great. Another Red Bull win. But I mean, it's interesting if you just discount Red Bull altogether. If we're not even counting Red Bull, then the races are mildly interesting. (laughs) I think that there's some good competition, some healthy competition happening. Uh, Was happy to see that Alpine did at least finish the races, the race this weekend. So uh, they're at least getting somewhere, but Otmar's out. I have so much to discuss on that in a little bit. Okay, I have we'll get so into much it. on it. I did a lot of research. I was um, deep diving into Otmar. Um, but yeah, like Yuki was in the points. Yeah. I know we're like upset because Danny was not, but like happy for Yuki. That's still. okay. I, so, I still um, want y- Yuki to succeed. Yes. Charles got pulled. Obviously didn't win the race, but he was on the podium, yep. which I'm like, which we'll God. take. We'll take for Kate's bachelor weekend. He needed that. And I needed that yep. for him. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was good. Carlos and Oscar had a little um entanglement one might say <laughs> uh, at the beginning and ended up neither of them finishing the race um obviously also carlos really like publicly blamed oscar, oscar which is fake because it was obviously his pant choice for the weekend so like that's like <laughs> super rude of him for like blaming oscar <laughs> or there are people online like mad at carlos 
for like calling out Oscar. Like people are like pissed off at him. He, so Oscar after the race, like, oh yeah, obviously like, you know, tried to like do like a bold move, but it like didn't work. And, you know, sorry to Carlos for like, you know, neither of us finished, whatever. And Carlos like posted his Instagram and, and tweet was like, not a great, or like was, could have been a good race, but Oscar was too optimistic. And then like admitted to like seeing Oscar in his like rear view mirrors and his side mirrors and like knowing he was there, but mm-hmm. just like kind of not caring. He just like didn't expect him to like try to overtake him. But people were like really mad at Carlos for like blaming a rookie. I'm sorry. Know, people are just mad about you. I mean, <laughs> why be upset when you can just have fun? I'm sorry. Like uh, these are athletes who want to win and obviously yeah. like they're not just gonna be like oh it's okay buddy you did your best yeah sorry that i got in the way like obviously carlos is pissed because yeah. he's fighting for his chance to stay at ferrari at this point he's driving to survive yeah the there's moment. rumors that he's gonna get axed and so obviously he yeah. needs to accumulate all the points that he can for that team and why would he assume that oscar in the shitty mclaren not really anymore, but like is going to try and overtake him in the Ferrari when yeah. he didn't have the right away. Right. Yeah. Like I don't blame Carlos for being mad. And that's not me. That's not just because I'm a Carlos apologist, <laughs> but like, why are people like people get so pressed about literally everything. It's, I just feel like people need to stop being mad about the way that these people react mm-hmm. to everything. Like, how would you react if you were in that situation? Right. Like be for real please you know we know that people just like to be mad people just like to be upset and we just like to have fun (laughs) and that's the difference there but also like you're allowed like the drivers are allowed to be mad and upset with each other like doesn't mean that they're gonna like uh, put hits out for each other like not like in the north end (laughs) that's why i said it but like i just feel like they're allowed to be upset with one another just like you're allowed to be upset with your friends when they do something stupid girl i get it amen retweet inside everyone there are two wolves one wolf that likes to be upset and one wolf that likes to have fun it's the wolf that likes to have fun that we we listen subscribe to 100 yep. percent. you know other things that happened during the race uh lewis was saying that mercedes purposing is back mm-hmm. um and toto was like yeah i think it's our new upgraded floor <laughs> So they just went so forward, two steps back. back. Um, So super bummer for them. Hopefully they can figure it out. While Max won and like had a good race, there were a couple things that happened with him. First, him and his engineer just are very funny because they're just like an old married couple. Like people are like, you guys need marriage counseling. Yeah. It's very funny to listen to them. Um, Christian was asked about it and he said, Max, quote, would break many race engineers. (laughs) <laughs> I was like, yikes. yikes. These, these two guys have been working together for a long time and they have like a very trusting relationship. And like, and I think he even said, he's like, oh, people can joke that they need to get some counseling, but like they just respect each other and they know each other so well that it's fine. But he was like, yeah, Max is very intense and he's an aggressive driver. He would probably break many race engineers. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Some of the quotes out of him this weekend, the, the engineer was just like, Max, stop being a whiny bitch. <laughs> and just drive it was really funny like really funny. and then he's like but also don't drive too slow you pussy yeah and max is like what if we just do an extra uh an extra pit stop and he's like no max he's like uh you're really not handling your tires very well mate like do better he said, next time. at one point what did he say like use please just use your head yeah he's like use your head please um <laughs> i like love so funny. i love the fact that they're able to kind of have that relationship yeah and you know i'm thinking about what Max being in a romance novel where he falls in love with his race engineer. <laughs> and they just have this like witty banter over it's like in that one. Um <laughs> I remember that one F1 uh romance novel we read and the ending is she <laughs> gets on the um That's dirty air. That's No it's not. Rattled. No, it's not. It's not? No, I'm thinking of the one, the one, one? Scott, I think so. And she gets on and she's, it's in Austin and she gets on the ra- radio at the end and is like telling him what to do because the tires were like going to blow up. Remember, she was like a tire analyst and she like <laughs> oh. uncovered a secret plot that like all the tires are going to blow up. And then she asked him to marry her on the radio like while he's oh racing. God, and I was just like, yes, 
Okay, yeah. On him. So that's what that just reminded yeah, me of. That's exactly what it would be. But like, obviously, Max, at in the early days, like she yeah. doesn't, like Christian says, oh, he would He's break a lot break. of people. Yeah. Like it, it, she comes in mm -hmm. after a series of failed race engineers mm -hmm. and they've all quit and they've just, you know, not been able to handle him. And she comes in yeah. and really just like steps on his throat. And she's yeah. like, oh, th no, this wasn't the, this wasn't the Scottish one. Because the Scottish one, she came in and she was his publicist right. after a string of failed right, publicists. Right, right. The one I'm thinking of is the girl that um, they were childhood, like they were dating in high school and then they broke up and then they like hadn't talked forever. And then she got a job at the race team that he worked at. And it like turned out that like his mom or her mom hated him because her mom cheated on her dad with his dad but then also his mom cheated on his dad with her dad they, they just like she, it was the crazy it was i can't remember which one it was i think it was the same series like it was the same um author the yeah same, like kind of universe of that but it was yeah and then they were like a childhood sweethearts and they got back together and um i'm screaming yeah, yeah it wouldn't was... be that bad. It would actually be good. <laughs> but um, that's one where she gets on the. That's one where she gets on the radio, radio. At the end okay. and proposes to him yeah. while he's racing in a race. Yeah, that's yeah, that's how it would go. And so it'd be a combo. Yeah, it'd be a combo. The combination he's got Taco Bell of those two stories yeah. for Max. Yeah, enemies to friends to lovers. Enemies to colleagues to friends to lovers. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yes, love. <laughs> Um, anyways, also something that happened next this weekend is that his trophy was broken yet again. Saw that. Um, hysterical. It was the the pit board, like, they were all running away from the champagne after they took their photo in the pit board just kind of, like, fell. Smash. Which, you know what, I was, I was watching that and I was like, why do they all run away? Because they're like, we don't want to get wet. Haha, -ha, this is funny. It's just kind of like, let someone else win then if you don't want to celebrate, right. you know? It's kind of like takes the fun out of it. I'm over Max and Christian running away from the, the, the champagne from the showers, you know? <laughs> I got it. Um, the anthem. The anthem. The anthem. We have to talk oh about the anthem. Oh, my God. Uh, the, it was the cape of it all. It was the cape. It was the sunglasses. It was just him in general. Um, it's the anthem itself, like, the actual, like, lyrics and beat of the anthem. Um, it was all of the drivers trying not to to break and laugh um it was, it was the an slow episode pan. of pan it was the slow pan to alonzo where he's like am i is everyone else seeing what i'm seeing <laughs> he's looking at lando and someone tweeted and they were like they're like the best thing that could have happened here um and just thank god that lando did not look at alonzo because it would have been over for all of them yeah <laughs> yeah C what can you imagine if they had put Danny and Lando next to each other too? Like, I feel like that also would have been a nightmare. Chaos. Um, Lewis is listening to a different song. <laughs> he's not even paying attention to the anthem. He's vibing to a song playing on his AirPods. What song do you think he was listening to? His own. He was listening. Yeah, he was. Lewis listening. is the type. Lewis is Lewis the type of guy to fire. listen to his own music <laughs> and vibe to it. Lewis is me whenever I'm listening to something. And I'm like, damn, this playlist is so good. And then I look and it's one that I made. <laughs> and I'm like, once again, I have incredible taste. He's just like simply vibing in his own world. And I'm like, is that even allowed? Like you're allowed to just like disregard the national anthem of the country that you're in and listen to whatever you want on your AirPods. Someone gave him the heads up of what was about to go down. They're like, this is this man is being put here at first. So the sole purpose of just distracting you. I'm like they're like, psyching you out before this. Yeah, race. don't listen. It's actually just a personal message from Kim Kardashian telling Lewis that she's really proud of him. And it's a cameo. <laughs> Angela got a cameo from Kim. I'm screaming. That's so funny. It was just um kind of a chaotic mess and but like I wish more people had not held it together like I feel like it could have been really, really, funny. really funny. It's like when you watch SNL and you're like I wish they would break more. Like yeah. it's so much funnier when they break. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's summer break finally. So oh, it might be and might he's be. skinny dude. He's yeah, real he and he has a bun. He looks he looks small though. I don't know, let's wait he's turning around. <laughs> he's just putting something in the mailbox. Guys. <laughs> <My vote. laughs> 
there's a man putting something in the mailbox, and my mom really wants Nicole to I marry like your neighbor. As if he is, but we're not yelling. My mom really wants Nicole to date and marry our next door neighbor, but we've never <laughs> no seen, one him, has seen him. So we kind of thought that she made him up. <laughs> okay. Do we think that's him? Hey, are you Jake? <laughs> that is his accent. <laughs> hey, are you Jake? He's like, no. no. Jake from State Farm. Oh, he's so skinny, dude. That is man is for you. <laughs> Yeah, I could change him. I could fix him. Into what? I don't know. I don't like his posture, you know? <laughs> you not stand up straight. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, he is pretty handy, though. So, I do like that. We do like that. Um, anyways, anyways, back <laughs> to F1. It's summer break. It's summer break, finally. Guys, TBD. Nicole and I might also go on a little <laughs> summer break because... I don't know if you've noticed, but the past few weeks we've said we didn't know what to talk about today. We've still had some stuff to talk about, but I think that, you know, everyone, the drivers deserve a couple weeks off. And I would like to say, I think we deserve a couple <laughs> weeks off. Considering we have put out a podcast every single episode since Jan 1, or like every single week since Jan 1, I think, I think we, you and I can take it two weeks off. I think I would, I think so. Yeah. Um, Unless anything major happens and that, you know, deserves a quick little mini sode, I think we're probably going to take a little summer break, too, because we need to rest and recharge. These batteries depleted. Yeah. Need to be recharged real bad. Um, But we'll be back better than ever. You guys know that. Um, So just so you guys know, that's just a little PSA. That's just a PSA. PSA. We might take a break. Um, Not for good. Not like One Direction. No. This is not a high 18-month hiatus. This is a two-week break. This is two weeks. Because we also have to plan for Italy, guys. We gotta get we gotta get prepped. We gotta get, you know, we gotta get it right, gotta get it tight. Gotta so be at the gym instead of recording this podcast. Exactly. Uh, okay. Big F one news. Let's talk about it. I'm ready to talk about Otmar. Yeah, so, we gotta get into Otmar, the Otmar of it all. The Otmar of it all. So just one week after the Alpine CEO Laurent Rossi was fired. Team principal Otmar Safnauer was also let go less than two years into his tenure as team principal, uh, despite his success last year, because mm-hmm. they had a pretty good season last year, and his really great reputation, like people love Otmar. Um, he, they also fired the Enstone sporting director, Alan Permain, and chief technical officer Pat Fry left mm-hmm. to join Williams. So, so it's like a big ex- going ex- down. It's an, absolute exodus over there um and then a couple fun facts from the article that i was reading um is that since 2016 um alpine and also right like when it was right so like this team itself have had 14 principals and eight drivers and in fact the team have made at least one change to their driver lineup every year between 2016 and 2021 before changing it again for 2023. That's crazy. So like, only 2020, 2021, 2022 was it the same. Yeah. So Alpine's former special advisor and Formula One legend, Elaine Prost, um, he worked with the team since 2020, 2017, not 2027, 2017, and left, just decided to leave on his own accord uh, before the 2022 season, mm-hmm. um, hated it there, said he like, he accused the team of having no respect and he implied that Laurent Rossi, who was fired a couple weeks ago, um, he adopted a culture of blame, scapegoating, and fear rather than taking reasonable measures to work with the personnel to improve. Mm. Um, so I don't know if anyone knows, but back, I believe when they put Rossi in place, or maybe it was Otmar, I think it was Rossi, they have this like 100 race plan. Mm-hmm. And they basically are like, in 100 races, will be ready to like fight for world championship. Yeah. And they like gave themselves, this, they have this whole like 100 race plan, um, kind of like a five-year plan for right. everyone else. Uh, so they asked, someone asked Cyril about it and Cyril was yes, like, and he said that he thinks that plan is flawed. And he was like, I just don't understand like why a hundred races, like why not 80, why not 120? Like, mm-hmm. and then he was saying, he thinks that they are like, the plan is flawed. And he agreed with like, like Otmar and people that have recently been fired and what they've said where they've said like change takes time Mm -hmm. and especially like you put people in in somewhere and you can't expect it to just change overnight like it takes time once you've put people in places like people in place to 
get things to change the way that you want them. Right. Like you have to give it time and they just keep like not allowing for that time. And so yeah. they just kind of like keep resetting the clock yeah. as they're trying to get to this hundred right. races rather than like doing something and like actually working to make it work in the long term. Um, I mean, as Atmar said, as he always says, mm -hmm. As he's notoriously known for saying, you can't <laughs> impregnate nine women and expect to have a baby in one month. Like, that's just not how it works. <laughs> that is like the most unhinged quote. And I hate that he's like, as I'm known for saying, as I why do you say, always say that? Like, yeah, like, why are you saying that all the time? Where did you hear this? Did you make it up? It's like, yeah, you know, the age old saying, I say this all of the time. It is. I'm going to start saying it. <laughs> I'm just saying that just out of pocket to people. Everyone would be like, what? But it's actually funny because it made me think of when Danny left mm -hmm. Reno and Cyril said pretty much the same thing. He was like, Danny signed on for like us and we had given him this like five year, probably a hundred race plan <laughs> um, of like what we we're going to do. And he signed on for the long-term like vision um to help build the team yeah back and there. then he like yeah. left before we could even like get close and like that's why Cyril was so upset about it yeah but anyways so that's that's Otmar that's Alpine so TBD on what's gonna go on however uh I did also hear that Martin Brendel was talking about maybe Benotto Mattia mm -hmm. Benotto replacing Otmar but like the quote I really just pulled this because of the quote of what he said is just giving us, it's just giving TG one F fives. He said, this is a funny old place. And as you know, you can start a rumor just for fun and see how quickly it comes back to you as a fact, but it's not out of the question. And I said, that's true. My man, that's my man, Martin, you get it. You can start a rumor just for fun and see how quickly it comes back to you as fact. That's us every week. Every week. So that made me chuckle. LOL. Gave me a little giggle today as I was researching. Um, Another big piece of news is that all the F1 drivers have been talking about the wet tires and mm -hmm. basically being like, they're useless. Like they're, they're not even needed anymore. And Pirelli has come out and been like, yeah, we agree. Because, I mean, everyone's just kind of calling them safety car tires yeah. now because F1 is like moving into like looking at the rain and the um danger not in like driving conditions right. but more visibility right. and so they said <clears throat> and i didn't want to paraphrase this because i didn't it's like a little more technical and so yeah. i wanted to actually get it right so i copied the quote and i'll read it out loud so quote it's from pirelli quote if the idea is to continue to look for a device that is able to reduce the spray and therefore give drivers the possibility to run in full wet conditions we have to keep the two brought products inters and full wets but if the full wet tire is used only behind the safety car, I agree with drivers that at the moment it is a useless tire. So we have to decide which is the direction we want to take for the future in order to develop the product that is needed for Formula One. And I think that's very fair. It's just like, you don't need this tire if it's just going to be behind the safety car because like you can use literally like probably any other tire. But if they're actually going to be like racing, they're, I guess they're working on new things kind of not like the halo but like mm -hmm. in that vicinity to kind of reduce the yeah they're putting spray. like basically covers over the back tires yeah. kind of to help reduce the spray. the spray i saw kind of a, a rendition of that earlier yeah movies, so if they I can do that so if they can do that and they reduce the spray so that they can like see mm -hmm. as they're driving in the rain um then they would keep the inters and the wets because mm -hmm. then they'd actually be able to use them and they wouldn't just need a safety car every time it gets to that point right um you know what? Pirelli is just trying to figure out the art of racing in the rain. <laughs> That's what Pirelli is trying to do. That's what Pirelli is trying to do. And uh, maybe one day they'll get it right. Maybe one day. Another thing we're hoping that one day gets it right. Uh, Formula Academy has some new news. Mm -hmm. it's very, very exciting. exciting. Um, Jinx, you owe me a Coke or a Dr. Pepper. <laughs> this stuff is kind of busted. I know. I Now that I, I've had a little bit more, I'm like, okay. Yeah, I'd, be, I'd really like it on ice. Yeah. It tastes like a milkshake. Yeah. Um, so Formula Academy announced that as of next year, all 10 F1 teams yep. will have a car and a driver participating in Formula Academy. So they will all have to have a woman driver mm -hmm. that they're putting on the grid and they'll all be backing a team. I think this year, what I think there's like four 
F1 teams or yeah, something like something that. Like that. Um, so I think there's 15 cars on the Formula Academy grid. I could be wrong here. That's why we need Susie to come on and teach us all about it. Um, but I believe that there's 15 cars on the F1 Academy grid. So 10 of them will be affiliated with F1 teams and also those will be affiliate drivers. Mm -hmm. And then the other five cars will be like something else. Right. But really exciting to see the F1 teams get more like intricately involved. And I mean, that was um, the main goal from the start yes. to begin with. Right. Was so, like it's, really, so it's, it's nice to see like such quick they're progress sticking to the and, word, it's, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's not like, yeah, we're going to do that in like 2026. Right. Um, but it's like the next year they're doing that. So right. really exciting. Um, can't wait to see what happens with that. Uh, and then the last piece of like big F1 news that I want to talk about is that Haas might be Alfa Romeo next That's year. That's crazy. Which feels nuts. Uh, so Gunther confirmed that they've had initial talks with Alfa Romeo because Alfa Romeo's partnership with Sauber is over after this year. And as we know, Sauber really wants to join up with Audi mm -hmm. and Audi's ready to get into F1 in 2026. Right. Um, so everyone just kind of assumed that they might like renew their partnership for a couple of years. Yep. But Alfa Romeo might be looking for something a little more long term uh, than staying with Sauber. So it sounds like they might be talking to Haas about that, which is interesting. And I'm wondering if Sauber might just be Sauber again, like go yeah. back to being Sauber F1 team for yeah. like two years until Audi's in. Um, which is would be so good for us. Wow, Gunther redemption arc. Like he's just <laughs> to the He's moon. doing the damn thing. I and you know what? This is this is a good testament to what Otmar was saying about change takes time. Mm -hmm. Because Gunther has been put through the ringer for years. For years. And he's had this plan. He's been working. He's always he's been building the relationships. He's been schmoozing. Mm -hmm. He's been wheeling and dealing. He's been talking to people and look, time. It's paying off. Yep. And like like Omar and everyone says it doesn't doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. It's a long game. And uh Gunther's making it happen. And you know we stand Gunther on this podcast stand. so hard. He's our ultimate girl boss and we respect his hustle so much. And so I would be psyched to see Absolutely Gunther pull Alpha Romeo. I wish I could talk to Gunther about it. I know. That would be sick. Maybe one day. Maybe we will. Who knows? Manifest minute. Manifest minute. Um, hold on. All right. I'm moving on to drivership. Let's get into it. But I mean, the Martin Garrick supremacy just <laughs> continues. We talked about it last week. And then immediately, summer break had barely even begun. I, they and said, and Max were like, they said the here. race is over. We're flying directly to Martin's side. Martin's side. And they were at Tomorrowland. So now we do have a new plan, guys. Yeah, we do have a new plan. New we said plan we, of action. We would really like to go to Tomorrowland at one point. Mm -hmm. We're not really rave girlies, but like we want to try it out. experience it. We do know? love the movie Ibiza. Yeah, we love it. Um, So we are like trying to have our own Ibiza moment. Mm -hmm. And w I mean, I'll take Martin Garrix instead of Rob Stark. Yeah. Answer, I guess. Um, I'll be married, but. I'll take him. You can have him. I'll have him. I'll be, I'll be the friend. Yeah. So, so we decided that we would love to go there and mm -hmm. that's where Orlando and Max and Martin were. So our new plan is we're going to, we have to infiltrate F1. We're on the way. We're, we're, we're on, on the well on our way that. to doing that. Yeah. And once we infiltrate F1, odds are we're meeting Martin Garrix. He's it's everywhere. One way or another. There's, it's almost, it's almost a guarantee. It's <laughs> almost like when you sign up, that's your perk. Yeah. Like, Oh, sign up for this. If I sign up for the gym and you get like one month free or something, <laughs> it's like infiltrate F1 and you automatically are friends with Martin Garrix. <laughs> so you get to be side stage at a at one Martin Garrix concert of your choice. <laughs> you and three friends. <laughs> so obviously once we infiltrate F1, we'll become friends with Martin and then we'll get Martin to invite us to Tomorrow world. Yeah. Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland. So clearly it's just three easy steps. Three easy. This, the nice thing about this is that we've broken it up into attainable chunks. <laughs> yeah. And this is like one step in front of the other. Yeah. There's one one in front of the, of the other. other. We're it's bite sized chunks. <laughs> easy to do. So, so if you, if you see us up as a part of the Martin Garrix cult, mind your business, <laughs> mind your business. And, and we are also a chokeholded in a chokehold by martin garrix Mind you, your business. we already told you it was happening yeah and we wanted it to happen okay so we'll never join the 
Salt Bay clan though. No. We're not doing that. If we okay, here's here's how you know that we're in trouble. Mm. If we're ever at a Salt Bay restaurant or we ever put up on our story, oh my god, we love Salt Bay so much, you know we're being held hostage. Gun to our head. Guns to our head. We're, call help. Please call, call help. the United Nations, call <laughs> the US Army Reserves, whoever you need to call Joe Biden. Get I don't know. To the US Embassy <laughs> somewhere. Please get help. to the consulate. <laughs> um, but if you see a side stage at Martin Garrix, we're know okay. that we're we're okay and we've and willingly that, gone. We've gone willingly. <laughs> we are not being held hostage by Martin Garrix. No. But if we ever say something good about Salt Bay, he is he's got the salt right above us. Yeah. And he said this is gonna, actually anthrax. He's gonna rub he's, it right in our wounds. He's salt bang anthrax on us, just <laughs> we're done for. Someone asks in the DMs and like, who do you think is next to fall prey to like, who's next on Martin Garrix's list of F1 drivers to pull into his cult? And they're like, which of the rookies? Who of the rookies? I just like young drivers. Um, I said, I feel like Logan's a like, Logan. Logan feels like a prime suspect. Logan's from Florida. Logan is there like logan's a white dude from florida he's been to ultra yeah so sure. just... he's going to electric daisy he's like i'm ready for tomorrowland with Martin. yeah so i just feel like he's like yeah he's in the wings waiting to be noticed by martin garrix he's like he's waiting for his turn like, he's prepping his resume he had the same thought he has the same course mm-hmm. and plan of action as we did. he said i have to infiltrate formula one yeah, actually, Logan Sargent's end game was not to be an F1 driver. It's actually to be able to go to Tomorrowland with Martin Garrix. So, Surprise! And that's why he got on to Williams with Alex Albon, because he knows that Alex Albon is best friends with Lando, mm-hmm. and then Lando is friends with Martin Garrix. So he's like, through yeah. the process of osmosis, right, exactly. he's well on his way to step number two of right. the three-step plan. 100%. And I wish him the best of all. Yeah, but he's going to be upset when we we achieve that dream before him. him. Yeah, so Logan, you better hit yourself to our wagon because <laughs> we're, on, we're, we're on our way. We're on our way. This is the amazing race. <laughs> Did you want to have versus Logan? Who can get to Tomorrowland with my Garrick's faster? And he has no idea he's playing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Saw. <laughs> Do you want to play a game? Do you want to play a game? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like saw every time we play one of these like what if games and we just like have this little we're like puppeteers or we're like hey guys do you want to play a game it's called going to the beach for the day <laughs> yeah, and we're going to tell you all what to do drivers and we're telling them what to do oh my god you know what we should do what? no okay I'm doing this when I get home I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna create a sims world yes. with all f1 drivers yes and then we're gonna i'm Play gonna design them. little yeah design <laughs> little houses and then if they do bad that week then i trap them in the pool or i lock them in the basement um i'm dead yeah that's what i'm oh, gonna do we, and then we can get back on twitch and yeah. live stream oh my god instead, instead of recording the podcast i'm just gonna go on <laughs> twitch and you guys can watch me create the f1 driver community <laughs> and it's like it's like um like animal hostels and they have like the bunny cams or when like shakes creek and you can watch them we just keep it live stream to our sims channel all the time so people can see what's up with them <laughs> they're like we make i'll make little wags and yes then, and then and you can make the x wags club x wags club okay you guys i'm actually like i'm actually doing this i can't wait i can't wait to live with you next week and do this with you like sit around a computer it's like it's like in middle school when you would go to, over someone's house and you would go to their computer room yeah because there was only one like desktop computer right. in the whole house and it would be like well this is my house so i get to be on the computer and all your friends would just like watch yeah you play a game. yeah That's what we're gonna do next 100 percent. okay amazing i can't wait i'm psyched wow okay anyways <laughs> stay tuned <laughs> That's crazy that we went from Martin Garrix, Logan Sargent, Saw, sit, live streaming <laughs> Sims. <laughs> it's how these brains Our minds work. are a beautiful place. Don't question them. Eternal sunshine of the spotless <laughs> mind. Also, broken brain syndrome. The Ferrari meme. That the Ferrari they... meme. We need to talk about it. Because... There was no context to what that was supposed to be. Yeah. There was not, they didn't have anything in there that like would point to The Last of Us. I mean, as- if you had known the meme, like I was like, I know this is a recognizable meme, but I thought it was Brokeback Mountain. We all did. Everyone <laughs> thought that was Brokeback It was just two men 
leaning wistfully against the distance. Some like some mountains in the background. And it was, was Brokeback like, Mountain. This is giving Brokeback Mountain. Is this a scene from Brokeback Mountain? And I I googled Brokeback Mountain memes. Didn't come up. And then I was like, where would this be from? And I said, maybe it's The Last of Us. And I Googled The Last of Us. And I said, okay, there it is. Um, but I was just like, that just, would have been was so not... out of pocket for them to do a Brokeback Mountain meme. But also everyone was like, this is the version of Brokeback Mountain that we need. 100%. 100%. <laughs> it was, that was, yeah, it was, um, it was a really unhinged social post yeah. from them. Like, there, I just feel like there was no mention of, like, The Last of Us. There was no, like... I don't. There was just nothing called it, and they like put the faces over it too much. Where, right, like, you changed that a lot, and it was very. And like the meme is also about having a panic attack. So like I get it, but also like didn't really feel relevant. It was them yeah. kind of looking wistful, but I feel like we could have used that in a different meme. But you know what? I'm not mad about it. I just got a good giggle out of it because 100%. I was like, wow, they really went balls to the wall on this meme, and they made them broke back mountain. That's incredible. It was hysterical. Okay, let's play a game. This is we're let's play saw. Hey, you want to play a game? <laughs> it's time. This is now, the fun segment is now just called the Saw Basement. <laughs> yes. Every week, the Saw Basement. Um, okay. It's the TG1F Basement. And that's where we just play with their little, we play with their little dolls. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do, so we talked a little bit about my bachelorette party earlier in this episode Mm -hmm. and all of the camp games that we did. So what we're going to do is Nicole and I are going to draft teams um, because at my bachelorette, we are divided into the purple team and the blue team. And we did all of the events and, you know, each event there, like one team would win. And so at the end of the day, who the the blue team ended up winning and everything. So Nicole and I are going to like straight up gym class um draft, draft teams from the f1 drivers to create our team and then we're going to go through all of the games that we played this weekend and decide who we think whose team would win mm-hmm. okay because you planned the bachelorette and it was so wonderful i'll let you choose first you can have first draft pick okay are you keep in are you gonna write, I'm gonna write them down lewis i am gonna choose mm, botas okay danny i'm gonna go max i'll take carlos Okay. I'm going to go Pierre. K-Mag. I'll do Charles. Checo. I'm going Alonzo. Lance. Yuki. Logan. Ando. Alex. I'll go George. I'll take Nico. I'll do Joe. To so who's left? Um, Oscar and Esteban? Yeah. I'll take Esteban. Oscar. Okay. So Team Kate is Valtteri Botas, Max Verstappen, Pierre Gasly, Charles Leclerc, Fernando Alonso, Yuki Tsunoda, Lando Norris, George Russell, Joe Guan Yu, and Oscar Piastri. And Team Nicole is Lewis Hamilton, Daniel Ricciardo, Carlos Sainz, Kevin Magnuson, Sergio Perez, Lance Stroll, Logan Sargent, Alex Albon, Nico Hulkenberg, and Esteban Ocon. Sorry, sometimes I forget their last names because I'm like... I know. But sometimes <laughs> also other of them, I only know their last names right. and I forget their first names. <laughs> very funny okay so first up I'd, let's just go in order for how we played them on um on saturdays the first thing we did was cornhole also called bags no we did three-legged race first we did three-legged race first so three-legged race so choose two people from your team or four people from your team that we did a baton we did a yeah like baton. A baton. <laughs> um okay let's see i'm picking alex and esteban because they're the same height and build nice I think. So nice that's for them and then my closers are going to be K Mag and Checo. Oh, I like that. Okay. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do Pierre and Charles because mm-hmm. they're like best friends and I just feel like they're very in sync. So like we'll have I feel like they can communicate very well. So they'll be first. And then my closers are gonna be for some really weird reason I wanna put Max and Botas together. Okay. I don't know why. I feel like also maybe similar height and build, like they just feel like they both just I think are gonna very focus on winning. They'll be ready to go. I no. don't know who I don't know who would win out of that. I don't know. It's hard. I kinda feel like your team is gonna win that one. I don't yeah. know. I feel like there you have like the height. Yeah. The the gate. They you have, have the, gate. the gate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean Esteban and Alex is giving Victoria and Riley just yeah, being very insane. hundred percent. Hondo P. Okay. Next up is Cornhole. 
AKA bags. AKA bags. AKA for anyone who may not live in the United States, it's basically a game where you throw bean bags onto a board that has a hole in it and you just want to try and get them in the hole or on the board. Um, who's, who's your team? I'm going to do Pierre and Yuki. Okay. I think I'm going to do Logan and Lance. Feels right. Feels right. Because I feel like Bags is a very American game. And yeah. I feel like they're kind of American bro enough. And I know Lance is Canadian, but still kind of vibes. Yeah. Um, and I feel like they've definitely played this game before. I'm going to do, like, Pierre, I feel like, is always doing those, like, hand-eye coordination things. Mm -hmm. So I feel like he's going to be really good at, his like, aim is good. his aim is mm -hmm. going to be really good. And then I just feel like Yuki doing it with him is hysterical. Like, yeah. And I feel like um, they're very competitive with each other. So yeah. I think they'll push each other very well. On this. I'm trying to remember, like, who was actually pretty good when they did, like, basketball. Like, the mm, – Yeah, yeah, yeah. was good at the NBA stuff because I feel like that could translate – decently I think no one i think no one yeah i think that's the answer <laughs> unfortunately who's do you who do you think's winning your team again i think your team is i think you got, drafted a good team for these <laughs> activities but your team just having the american canadian advantage yeah yeah okay next is dizzy bat yes so spinning around a bat getting pitched three balls and then uh, flipping cups. Yep. You can't say Logan for all of these because no, I'm not. No, I'm. I'm gonna okay. pick different people. I'm picking different people for each of the games. So okay. I'm trying to think strategically about like, yeah, which games are gonna be good. At. I'm just like Logan. Obviously, has no. played all of these no. games because he's American. Don't like worry, us. I'm playing fair. I'm playing fair. Um. Well, okay. So every technically on this game, everyone played. So yeah. who do you think would be the best? Like our just teams in general. Yeah. Okay. I think my <clears throat> team has an advantage. Because I don't have anyone, like, super tall mm, other than fair. George. And the tall people really struggled yeah. with it because it's hard for them to get head to bat yeah. on the ground. I have a lot of, like, the shorties. Yeah. So I feel like my team is going to go pretty quickly. Yeah. And I also feel like um, – I think where it could come down, though, is, is your team good at flipping cups? Um, I think Lando's going to be the weak link here. Because I just don't think he's going to be able yeah. to chug his drink very fast. And I think that he's going to, like, want to give up on the flip cup. I think Esteban's maybe my weakest link in this on this team in this game. I would agree with that. He's so lanky. Yeah. I just feel like he's probably not very good at it. But I feel like Lewis is competitive enough and is Americanized enough that I feel like at some point he's probably played flip cup. Yeah. I, I believe in that. Danny, 100%. Crushing Carlos. It maybe k met like i just feel like esteban is just one of those people where i'm like not sure nico probably could for some reason i have this vision in my mind that nico's actually pretty bro -y. oh 100 yeah, yeah and yeah, i yeah. feel like he's down with the drinking games yes i think on my team botas obviously has his own gin brand like he's chugging mm -hmm. he's good he's ready to go he also loves all different sports like mm -hmm. he's like cycling he's um He's played hockey. Yeah. Like, I just feel like he's going to be really good at the baseball portion. Yeah. Um, Pierre Broey definitely can just – he's just going to vibe. Yeah. He's going to be in on it. Um, Charles, don't – unsure. Unsure, but I think he's going to do his best. Uh -huh. uh, Alonzo, I'm – I feel really good about Alonzo. I feel really yeah. good about Alonzo. I think he's absolutely – he's going to – he's going to be like Carly, chugging his drink in, like, one second – only one spin on the on the back. Yeah, easy. Like he's gonna be so Call it open. He's done. <laughs> yeah, Yuki, I think is gonna be a very low key sleeper pick. Yeah, sleeper pick on this one because he's also so low to the ground that the bat's gonna be super easy yeah. on him. Um, I feel really good about him. I'll give you this win. Thank you, Lando. Definitely my. I'll give you the win on, on Dizzy Bat for sure. Um, Next up, we play Stack Cup. So I don't even know how to play this game still, so I don't think I'd be good at it. I think I think you got all the broy people. Yeah, you got the broiest of the bros for this. Well, that's why I picked strategically because I, I was like, we played a lot of drinking games, and which yeah. of the which of the grid feels confident in their drinking abilities? And so I, yeah, I think I'm taking home the cake. And I think you're up. taking it. Yeah, I think I, however, might take the cake on beer pong. Okay, 
because I do, I forgot about this, but I do have Charles and Pierre. Who would you match up for your beer? Charles and Pierre for sure, because they love basketball Mm -hmm. and I feel like they probably play together. Like they don't do it all the time, but I feel like, and they both play like pickleball Mm -hmm. and stuff. So I feel like they have like the hand-eye coordination for a beer pong that would like be really good. I think Yuki again, sleeper pick. Mm -hmm. I just feel like he'd be really good at this. Oscar's Australian, so I just feel like that he's played this. Like, mm-hmm. it just feels like something that he's done. So I think I would do probably Oscar and Yuki, maybe. I don't know. I think my team would be, like, sneaky good at this because we have a bunch of, like, basketball fans. Also, Joe mm-hmm. loves basketball, so yeah. I feel like he's probably, like, really good. My, t- I think my top-tier team would be um, Danny and Logan. Yeah. Danny and Logan would go to the finals. Yeah. I think. Um, I would pair Carlos and Checo together. Okay. Yep. Love I that. think I would do Lance and um, Lewis. I like that. And uh, K Mag and Nico, and then Esteban and Alex, I feel like would be my, my weakest links. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm doing Pierre and Charles. Botas and Joe, because they, I feel like, can communicate really well. And I think that if Botas isn't good at the throwing, Joe will kind of pick up the slack there. Uh, I'm doing Yuki and Oscar, George and Lando, and Alonzo and Max. Perfect. So I don't know. I don't know who's going to win that one. That's, that, I mean, that's a bracket. That's so a bracket. It's hard. Even... It's hard to speculate. Yeah. On who would win. I feel like we both have – Two super good pairings on that. Who Very. would who would take it to the finals? And it would yeah. be anybody's guess who would win. Very. Charades. <laughs> yeah. Charades. I don't know. I feel like my team is gonna win charades. I think yeah, I, I don't, this feel, is the I don't feel good early. about my team in terms of like mind games. Mind games. <laughs> like I feel like they're better off at the physical aspect and the drinking games. I have a bunch of really good friends. Mm. On mine, where I feel like that's when you can like mind really, to mind yeah. Mine to my connections are very big on my team. If Danny and Max were on the same team, I think that that would be a no brainer. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna take charades. All right, I'll give you. Charades. And then last one was trivia, but it's about me and Nick. But I think it just in general, trivia. Botas knows really weird facts, so that's a good sign for me. I don't think my team would win trivia. I don't feel positive that this group of people could really pull it together. I mean, I got Carlos, Bimbo King. Danny's dumb. Lewis could maybe carry the team. Checo and Lance might. I'm sorry, I have George. Yeah. I have George. Yeah. I have George. And I, you know George is trivia master. Yeah. yeah. And I also have um, Charles, who wins a lot of the C-squared things about, like, trivia stuff. 100%. So okay. I'm feeling good that I got trivia. I think we might have tied. I'm, did we get them all? Oh, we didn't do water balloon toss. Mm. I think, like I said, for charades, weirdly, mind connections are really big on my team that I feel like they would do pretty well. Hmm. I think my team would do pretty well with the mind, the mind because there was, there's partners, there's team members. Gotta, it's got to be trusting. Yeah. I guess I'll give it to you. I kind of think we tied. I think our team's tied. Yeah. Again, I think it's hard because we won't we, we can't really know until we know. So we can't really know until we if, build our Sims world and we make them do these exactly, things. Exactly. Exactly. Until we run the simulation. We won't until know. they come to Camp TG one F <laughs> in two years and we make them all do this. Like, we'll just never know. We'll never know. Well, thanks for playing our little saw game. It was really fun. The TG one F basement strikes again. All right. A quick little short little girls, girls room. Girls room. Um but this is important. So there is a rumor. And apparently Ted. Ted Kravitz. Ted Kravitz gave away the fact that Tiffany and Valtteri are engaged. Allegedly. T. So I didn't see this. So take this with a couple of grains of salt. But apparently on it a broadcast. Somewhere, right? somewhere. Yeah. I don't remember where. But yes, in the Discord. Somewhere like on a broadcast, they were talking about like drivers going off for summer break. And... He was like, oh, yeah, and Valtteri Botas is, like, off on vacation with his fiance Tiffany Cromwell. And everyone was like, hold up, what? And I looked at the photos of her from the weekend. She's not wearing a ring. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, maybe they're, like, keeping it secret or something, but if maybe so... Maybe it was a mis- 
like Thank misfire. You, maybe he didn't mean it, but yeah, maybe he just like for misspoke. maybe he just assumed because like I don't know. I feel like they're like married. I'll make a married couple. Like they act like yeah, a hundred percent. Maybe he misspoke, but I I mean I wish it was true. I hope it's true. Hope it's true. Maybe they'll maybe they're on vacation to getting to get married. Maybe they're eloping. Them. That's so them. A dream. Yeah. That's so them. Yeah. They would definitely elope in like. Especially because they would he like, already did the big wedding. And you know? would like bike to like the top of a mountain yeah. and do it there. Like they'd do something very cool. Okay, love. I mean, I really hope so. An update on the ex-wags club. Mm-hmm. Uh, Louisa, Lando's ex, Louisa, went to an event over the weekend and she wore one of the pieces from Issa's new collection. And like tagged her and it was, yeah, it was like cute. the most incredible like outfit. Like, thank you so much, Issa Hernandez. And love. Issa commented and I was like, whoa, loving this. Loving this. The Carlando wags. The Carlando wags. They were they're so powerful. <laughs> um, and then in terms of girls that were at spa, we had Lily, he, Tiffany, and also Max's mom and sister were there. <laughs> and it just I had to put this on here because it just never ceases to amaze me. That she gave birth to her brother. <laughs> Those, their genes that are so strong. Baby Luca yeah. is Max. Yeah. It's scary. It is scary. It's uh, it's definitely his mini me for it's sure. Like incredible. Yeah, for sure. It's really cute though. I mean, he's so he's cute. A cutie patootie. But I was like, oh my God, this is nuts. Like him holding that baby. I was like, I am seeing double. Yeah. It was nuts. All right. Let's do a mini minute. I got, I'll I'll take this one. Okie doke. Um, so we got one from a. I had a bunch this week. We did. We had have a bunch. So a everyone, few. if you sent them in, uh, we will be getting to you over the next couple weeks. Maybe not. We'll see if maybe we need to do like just like a a mini sort of just a couple manifests. Yes. If they're like super urgent, but we will be getting to yours if we don't do it today. So please just be patient. Yes. Um. So. We got one from Katie. Okay. And Katie says, hi, my best friend and I got into F1 this year slash last year, and we binge all of your podcasts and have truly never related to anyone more. We can't decide who's more Kate and Nicole. It just depends on the day. <laughs> we have found our people in literally every aspect. Brittany Gallagher, her BFF, is turning 30 on August 17th this year, and she would love to submit a manifest minute slash birthday shout out um, that she will have the most the best and most fulfilled year yet 30 30 and thriving can relate we're also turning 30 Mm -hmm. this year um also as a side note that they will be at the austin grand prix and make eye contact with charles just the little things uh she says you all have brought us so much joy thanks for always representing and defending the fangirls perfectly hope the bachelorette recovery goes well so Brittany, this one is for you from your friend Katie. So if everyone could just join us in closing your eyes, taking a deep breath in, taking a deep breath out, and really just imagining a world in which you and all of your friends are turning 30. It's not scary. It's just another year. Uh, you feel finally comfortable in your own skin. You feel confident in the choices that you've made up until this point. And you know that you've made it this far and the future is only going to be better because you're going to be able to make better choices with more knowledge under your belt. Uh, you've, you've curated a really great group of friends and, and your family is, you know, ready to support you on this journey into this next chapter in your life. And Brittany, we hope that you are lucky enough to have a support system that makes you feel confident going into your 30th year. Uh, So take a deep breath in, deep breath out, and let's all just go forward with this week and try to be the best versions of ourselves in an idealized version of someone that we would like to be, or at least the person that we thought we would be when we're 30, whether or not you are in your 30s or you're over 30, just really try and be someone that younger you would be proud of this week. I love that. I love that. And happy birthday. Yeah. Brittany. Happy so birthday. 30 is a big one. We're both turning 30 this year. We can't wait. So hopefully you guys will also Crazy. manifest for us to have a good 30th year <laughs> you know, as you well. You were saying that, and I was like, this feels really personal. I was like, this is kind of like a little bit about me as well, but also for Brittany. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, 
So this may or may not be the last episode for a couple of weeks. Stay tuned. We'll let you guys know. But But in the meantime, we'll certainly see you on the internet. We'll see you on the internet. Bye. Bye.